first love. This is mostly haystacks and children making tractor noises. <laughs> Tired of wind, one of them curses it. This is Samuel. Even before the day begins, he is awake and taming his hair to keep the wind from his many thoughts. To himself, though, he looks like a threshed stalk, skinny as he is. Toward evening, the heavens withdraw from us, heavy, able to move and rain only. Samuel puts on his gloves and says to me, nowhere is ours. My coat isn't done. I'm a wheat field, unzipped. The Oxford comma. I'm a coin toss. Sammy, a handful of spiders. But then, Sammy's kiss, pressed and peeled away like film. And there are many moths flitting in the distance between breaths, winded in mimicry of seasons. Samuel's gloves are pockets, hands on hands, and he asks what's wrong. The house in my head, I want to say, with most of its doors open. Sam looks up into a sky of windows, slant press of light and torn carpet, and the evening crumbles like stale bread. I've been away so long, I start to say, thinking of my stepmother, my mother, and try to imagine my one father, but everything bleeds. The church across the street, for instance. I remember it suddenly in our living room. I remember touching the hard face of my mother, the sinking cushions, my sister with her hair up. Sammy ventures, are you hungry? Samuel, without wind in his hair. I put on my shirt and do up the buttons, my new breasts the tightness of my shirt. This wasn't, couldn't have been what sister meant when she said, pretty. Throwbacks more often now, memory gradually replacing thought. Time was younger before the war. The cat with my sister who usually excused herself. The bathroom before, the bathroom after, dinner. My body was a symphony, I remember it. The ornate rug sprawled at the foot of the stairs and then the top where I stood and shone. Yes, a little girl of twelve, my piano fingers were long and I spidered them, pointing in the wall papered air with bitten back bright orange nails. The cat snuck secretly, the hallway beside me. The cat, her aimless slow motion intent that is called and owned and has nothing to do. But then I turned and squealed, aha, Queen Kitty. With which beginning did I ruin this? Much later, I can still remember the rhythms, these instances of beginning as opening scenes, shoelaces, night crawlers, and earwigs. Voiceover. She doesn't listen to the tiny outages of neon hissing and the eat here sign as they pull out from the diner. She is feeling thrilled and self-conscious. She has forgotten to turn off the video camera all the way through Idaho Springs on, up, towards Cheyenne. Upward it films the top of the car, except during one portion in which the sunroof is open and she sleeps and they get clouds. I remember reading a book that evening, but the rest is gone. I can't even remember what book. The wind was an echo following a train, long swipes at continuousness and stations where it did not stop. Sam's hand on my knee was a continent, and me pretending it was not heavy, me, that I was never sinking. In the vacancy of a motel that night, I opened myself to him, his dark body shining as he heaved and pushed. I turned to the wall and watched his shadow slowly undulate and ripple. His belly, sweat against my belly, his arms shaking. Then my eyes pressed tight. 
In the morning, I was reading again. For an hour, the only sound was the slow stop and start and stop of the air conditioner. I think Sam stirred around noon. He didn't say anything as he stumbled from the sheets and into the bathroom. I heard him turn on the shower and then from across our fleeting room, Samuel smiled and said, come. The water, fitful and wild, his body, his hands, soaping my face, my back, my thighs. And then I remembered the camera. <laughs>